in this learning objective, we're going to look at how stakeholders can influence a firm's accounting policy regarding voluntary disclosures. <clears throat> so stakeholders are very important people that are external to the organisation. What we're talking about this week and what we talked about last week are what we call unregulated disclosures. Unregulated meaning it's not regulated by government policy or accounting standards. So just remember that accounting standards set a minimum that you must do, but they don't tell you the maximum that you must do. Once you comply with the accounting standards, you are quite free to make any disclosures you seem fit. So voluntary disclosures are what a firm chooses to disclose to its stakeholders. Last module, we looked at positive accounting theory, which tells us that managers will choose to voluntarily disclose to stakeholders based on what's good for their own self-interest. In this module, again, we're looking at voluntary disclosures, but we're looking at the influence of the broader social systems that surround the firm. And this is quite opposite, if you like, to uh, the internal pressures such as the manager's self-interest. The theories we're going to look at this week are from a family of theories called systems theories or open systems theories. They're characterized by being quite holistic. In other words, they take a broad or big picture view of the firm. They see the firm as part of broader social systems. Uh, they're aware that decisions are not taken in isolation. So it's not just about the accountants, it's not just about the managers or the board of directors, or even just about the shareholders. It's about society and the broader social systems even beyond societies. And with social, um, sorry, systems theories are concerned with the inputs and outputs that cross a system's boundary. When we study business, we're uh, already encountering social systems. We look at the legal systems, we look at economic systems, commerce systems, society itself, and also global social systems. And within those social systems, there are other systems that flow across them. So firms provide input into these social systems and also receive input or feedback from them. And just to give you an example, um, so Suppose a firm releases its financial report and it has good profit numbers. Now, this is an input into investor decisions. Investors are outside the firm. They're stakeholders. Investors will react based on the financial report and they will provide input back into the firm. One input could be buying more shares, which would increase the share price. Another input could be to sell shares, which would decrease uh, the share price. So you could imagine these as conversations occurring between the firm and investors. The tax office also takes a keen input and will provide its own input. It could be a tax bill, a tax credit, um, or a notice of legal action. Again, shareholders might demand more dividends as a result. So you can see in just this little scenario, the various conversations as I like to describe them happening between the firm and its stakeholders. And each time these inputs, outputs, conversations, they cross the firm's boundary. One of the uh, great thinkers in systems thinking is Peter Senge. And he describes it as a discipline for seeing holes rather than parts for seeing patterns of change rather than static snapshots, and for understanding the subtle interconnectedness that gives living systems their unique character. So when you start introducing systems theory and systems thinking to the study of accounting, then you can't help but be aware that there is more to accounting than uh, generating a financial report. Under systems thinking, you see that financial report as part of a broad conversation and a series of flows 
between social systems. Remember, the firm itself is a social system. So in this module, we're going to examine the role of social systems and the influence that those systems have on the firm through three primary, uh, sorry, three primary theories. They being legitimacy theory, stakeholder theory, and institution theory. But before we get to them, I'd like to discuss with you uh, why these particular th systems theories are important. And to know that we need to know um, some ideas that lurk behind them, some common ideas. One is the political economy theory. Uh, and you might think of this as PET, as distinct from PAT. Political economy theory basically says that everybody wants something in return. So I guess you could think of it as a much bigger picture form of uh, positive accounting theory. With positive accounting theory, we focused on the motivations of managers and their accountants. Political economy theory applies it to uh, broader social systems. And so we have seen we see social society, um, the various actors in society acting politically. They want quid pro quo. Uh, for example, take the decision whether or not to declare dividends from last year's profits. Accounting and economics will provide a, a rational and neutral risk-based approach to whether or not you should release funds out of your bank account and pay them as dividends. Political economy theory suggests that if managers think that the shareholders will revolt and sack the board of directors if no dividend is forthcoming, then I'm sure they'll find a way to pay just enough dividend uh, to make the shareholders happy. In contrast with positive accounting theory or PAT, um, there are real differences, but there are also similarities. Pat says that managers will make disclosures that best suit themselves. Whereas PET suggests that managers will be aware of the social and political implications before making a decision. So they definitely don't want to stir up and antagonize powerful stakeholders. Um, and when you realize that the tax office, for example, and the federal government are powerful stakeholders, you can understand uh, why managers would not want to antagonize them. If a manager can make a decision that appeases powerful stakeholders, uh, while also making a decision that's in their own best interest, well, so much the better. So these are not mutually exclusive theories. So there is overlap, but ultimately what the manager will do comes down to the core motivation for that manager. Is the manager more interested in appeasing powerful stakeholders out there uh, in the broader society? or is the manager more interested in their own self-interest? Like the political economy, we have this idea called the social contract. So the origins of the social contract are very interesting, but its big splash came in the form of a publication by uh, an author, Thomas Hobbes, writing in the 1600s. So Thomas Hobbes put forward ideas about how civil government should form. And these, these days when he's writing uh, were days of social upheaval, political upheaval. We're starting to see the, the end of the divine right of kings to rule as they see fit. Um, kings and parliaments often invoke the power of God to justify what they do. Hobbes um, believed that the greater good of society was served by the individuals allowing their rulers to do things, but there was a payback. The rulers had to rule in the interests of society, not for themselves. So this was a very dangerous idea at the time, uh, and Hobbes indeed lost many important backers because he managed to upset everyone. He managed to upset um, kings, parliament, um, and uh, religious leaders. 
So how does the idea of the social contract apply here? Well, it suggests that uh, firms and society in general have a kind of a contract. So the firm restricts what it can do to fit within society's expectations. And society in return will support the firm, um, will make capital available to the firm. So it's not so much a theory, I believe, as an idea, but it's one that sits behind so much of what we do. And why is the stakeholder so important? The stakeholders sit between the firm and broader societies. We can generally split stakeholders into two groups. Your primary stakeholders are your shareholders, debt holders, regulators, and so on. I like to think of them as these are the people who can shut you down if you cheese them off too much. So very important people, don't annoy them. Secondary stakeholders, uh, these are not your primary stakeholders, obviously. They don't have a direct interest in your firm, but they're very influential. So these are the people, they can't shut you down, but they can influence the people who can. And these can include trade unions, newspapers, and increasingly we're seeing these days, activist groups. So that's a, a quick overview for what we're doing this module. And what we're going to present now is a series of three uh, videos, each one based on one particular theory. So the first will be legitimacy theory, the second will be stakeholder theory, and the third will be institutional theory. So I hope you enjoy them. Bye for now.